Joining us now, ranking member of the House Oversight Committee, Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin of Maryland. Congressman, uh, what exactly did they do? Uh, well, they cheapened the meaning of uh, impeachment. Um, they Even continued more. to shred the Constitution. Um, and I, I think they made themselves look very foolish, as even the Senate Republicans are conceding this morning, the ones you bump into or talk to. Um, you know, the, the impeachment is an extraordinary remedy for a president or another high official who engages in treason, bribery, or high crimes and misdemeanors against the republic. It's not uh, a tool for trying to settle policy differences. The irony, of course, is that uh, there was a bipartisan compromise settling the, part of the uh, partisan policy differences and actually making real progress on immigration and the border. And they just wouldn't take yes for an answer. Why? Because, one, Donald Trump doesn't want uh, a border solution. <clears throat> he wants a border problem. And two, Vladimir Putin, uh, back in the home office, wanted to blow up the whole deal because he didn't want to see $60 billion going to the people of Ukraine struggling to defeat uh, his fascist invasion and then to win the war. And that's what this is about. Will America stand on the side of Ukraine to win the war? Will it stand um, with uh, the people of Israel in defending their security and also address the crying needs of the suffering Palestinian uh, population? And will we aid our allies in the Indo-Pacific? But what we've got is a right-wing isolationist mega cult that has overtaken the Republican Party, and they know that democracy and freedom are under siege all over the world, and they want to be on the side of the tyrants, the autocrats, and the dictators. Congressman, good morning. As you say, the impeachment of Secretary Mayorkas is purely symbolic, the impeachment by one vote, because it's going to fail in the Senate. He will not be convicted there, so he'll still be at his post. And as you say, if they actually, Republicans in the House, wanted to do something about the border, if they were sincere in that wish, well, there was the bipartisan legislation in the Senate that they could have taken up but have rejected that. So I'm just curious, you know, you are a guy who has a lot of friends up on the Hill, a lot of Republicans as well. You guys talk privately and you don't have to share your private conversation if you want, don't want to. But when you talk to a reasonable person, Republican on the Hill, how do they defend what they're doing right now? Which is to say, screaming from the hilltops, do something about immigration. And then when something is handed to them that's been on a bipartisan basis, led by Senator James Langford, a conservative Republican from Oklahoma, brought to them, they reject it. How do they rationalize that to themselves? Well, the shrinking minority of, you could call them Mitt Romney or Liz Cheney, Adam Kinzinger, Republicans, um, are distraught and increasingly desperate because they understand that uh, Lincoln's party of freedom and union has been reduced to a cult of authoritarian personality where one guy uh, calls all the shots, uh, Donald Trump, the fourth branch of government, or maybe it's even the fifth branch of government, Vladimir Putin, who's really calling the shots for Donald Trump. And then they all get in line and follow along. So, uh, you know, I think our best hope for trying to torture out some bipartisan compromises that will allow America to stand on the side of freedom and democracy and human rights around the world is um, on the Senate side. But uh, the, the tiny majority they have in the House is completely beholden to the MAGA right, to Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates and uh, Lauren Boebert um, and Gosar and so on. And they're taking their orders directly over the phone from Donald Trump that's the situation that we're in. And, um, you know, I, I wish that the, the block of Republicans that see what's happened to their party would stand together and um, get out of the Republican Party and start something new uh, at this point. But it's a completely contaminated exercise. And when I see Nikki Haley talking about what's happening, she's right, of course, but it's too late. She went along with Trump for a long time and even uh, work for him. And so a lot of them, uh, like Chris Christie or Nikki Haley, will, st will either their eyes open or they decide to start telling the truth. But it's just too late because he controls their party and 
Um, if through some miracle she were to start winning primaries, Donald Trump, he would just leave. He would lurch out of the GOP and run outside. So they may as well do it first and say that there's really nothing left there. Congressman, you mentioned the Republican slim majority. It just got a little smaller. Wanted to get your thoughts on the special election that happened in New York State last night on Long Island, where particularly the issue of migration was front and center, and the now Congressman-elect Swazi used it to the Democrats' advantage, pointing to the collapse of that bipartisan deal, blaming Republicans. It seemed to resonate. What other lessons do you think can be learned from last night that might be applicable to November? Well, Tom Suozzi ran strong on freedom, on women's uh, reproductive choice. Uh, he ran strong on democracy and supporting our allies around the world. Um, and he also um, ran strong on immigration and the border and wanting to come to some real constructive compromises. And that was basically the theme of his campaign. He doesn't want to see an immigration problem or a border crisis the way Donald Trump and the MAGA people want. He wants to see solutions. And th the Democrats have proven over and over again we're willing to work with the Republicans for solutions uh, at the border. But they understand now they can't use abortion anymore as their whipping post cultural war uh, divisive issue because they've lost everywhere from Kansas to Ohio to you name it. Anytime it's on the ballot, they go down. So they've overplayed their hand there. They used to call abortion a holocaust and murder. They still want a national law banning it, but they just don't want to talk about it anymore. So now they just want to talk about immigration. It's all that they've got left. Um, and in substance, they are just following that Trump-Putin line. And we need to make clear, as President Biden did at Valley Forge, this election is really about the future of democracy and freedom in this century. And President Biden, in February of last year, uh, he went over to Ukraine in October. He went over um, to Israel. And we need a peace strategy for the Middle East. We need a strategy to win the war um, against uh, Vladimir Putin in Ukraine. We need to get rid of the terrorist operations like Hamas, and we need to br bring relief to the people struggling in Gaza. And it's only President Biden and the party of democracy and freedom that offers hope for doing that. Ranking member of the House Oversight Committee, Congressman Jamie Raskin, as always, thank you. Thanks for being on this morning. We appreciate it. You bet. And